Here we go to red line. Holy crap, that's fast. The grand total we are in this Cayman S behind me, including purchase price and all of the costs to sort it out is Cheapest clean title Porsche Cayman in the whole wide world, episode three. Let's get it. Today's the day we find out if our $55 fix will hold up and if this car will survive a full send. Yes, today we are taking it to Redline. I think that's what, 7,500 RPMs on a thorough test drive to see if we actually solve the problem that we had in episode one. You guys remember the huge smoke screen that this car produced because of the faulty air oil separator. We thought it was like a crack in the engine or bore scoring or something like that, but I think we dodged a bullet but we gotta test it, right? But before we can get pushing it, we gotta do a fresh oil change, get all that nasty old oil out, and get some clean 550 in. Christian, is that the new filter going in? Man, you yes, make sir. quick work. I just I just whipped out the camera, he's almost done. It's because we've done this so many times. What is this, the fourth like Boxster 987, 986 oil change we've done? Yeah, like, and yet this one had a different oil drain plug than the rest of them. This had like, not a seven millimeter hex, not an eight millimeter hex, but something in between and it's got these little cutout notches. It's like inverse spline. Christian, did you notice any shiny metal flakes when you did that oil change? The filter, they say to cut it apart and check for metal flakes because that'll be bore scoring, right? The side of your cylinder walls. Oh, see anything in the pan? I don't want to get my nice ceramic coating gloves dirty. I'll cut that open in just a second, but so far I don't see any flakes. So that's a good sign. And you can go ahead and fight me on this in the comment section, but the best oil for a 986, 987 Porsche is five weight 50, especially here in Arizona where during the summer it'll get to 115, 120 degrees. Having that extra thick 50 weight when warm is great, but also having the five weight during cold starts is great because the design of this engine, it has to shoot oil up to the top of it. And if you have a super, super thick oil, they say it's not gonna get up there easy. So a 1550 would not be great, but a 550, it's hard to find, but I think, in my opinion, that's the best oil for this car. So Mobile One and a couple other companies make it. But Christian got lucky finding three boxes at Napa. Yeah, they were running a monthly special, got it down to like six, seven bucks a quart or something, which is pretty good for this unique uh, weight oil. But otherwise, I normally stick to Walmart for all my oil needs, cheapest out there. This should take about, we're gonna start with like seven quarts. You definitely don't wanna overfill this engine. So we're gonna start get it level, and then put it right up to the middle. This will be a really good test to see how quickly this car burns oil. So a lot of these cars, again, notorious for that bore scoring, that will increase your oil burn rate. So I think it's pretty normal to add like a quart every, say like one to 3,000 miles. But if you're adding a quart every like two to 500 miles, then that's a serious issue and you know you got some underlying problems. So when we fill this up, we're gonna make note of the oil level and then hopefully it doesn't drop much from there too quickly, if that makes sense. Okay, and while he's finishing up that, check it out. We are finishing up the ceramic coating, or I am. I know you're about to run down to the comment section and go, dang, why does the Cayman look so good? What did you guys do? Well, yeah, last video it was, you know, covered in oil soot on the whole rear half of the car. It was all nasty, dirty. The wheels were gross, the brakes were gross. But our buddies Christian and Rolando Pure Auto Detail came by, they did a full stage one polish. And of course, to lock in that nice shine and that perfect finish, we are doing the Avalon King ceramic coating. Hit that link down below, it'll save you, I think like 25 bucks when you buy a bottle. It's good for like two to three cars. You can use it on the paint, the plastics, the headlights. I mean, it is good. We love ceramic coating, that's no secret. So not only by the end of this video will it look like a 10 out of 10, but hopefully, It'll drive like a 10 out of 10. Okay, call it a 9.5 out of 10 because when we were reaching back into the engine bay from up here, we put our knee right here. And remember how I said this leather is so hard for some reason? It put a split right in the seat. Dang it. But actually not so dang it because I was gonna replace this anyway because it's just, it's just really beat up. The passenger seat is great, nice and supple, super smooth. But the driver's seat is all messed up. A few hundred bucks to replace it, so we're just gonna get a new seat or I don't know, I happen to be wearing my Corbo shirt. Should we put in Corbo race seats, guys, and turn this into like some track car? Cayman S is one of the best bang for your buck weekend track toys. It would be pretty fun to do that. So we'll see, but regardless, I think one of the first mods is going to be an exhaust. So comment down below, but let's say if this video gets, uh, pick a number between one and 10,000. <laughs> Siri, that's awfully, that's an ambitious goal, but 8,852 likes, okay? If you guys get this video to 8,800, 52 likes, we will agree to put on some sort of really cool aftermarket exhaust system, ditch the secondary cats, make this thing scream like the proper flat six that it is, so. All right, I got the trunk flashing right now, about a minute more and then I'll wipe that off. Gosh, the paint really cleaned up. I was shocked. Chris, you did not think it would look this good. 
Looks good. The front end's all done now. Guys, look at this, 105,000 miles, but this thing looks so good. Must have had some really good previous owners. I still don't know what wheels these are. I'm sure you guys commented on the first couple videos. If you know what they are, comment down below. Are they worth anything? Or is it just like some fake aftermarket set? I don't know, what do you guys think about the whole triple black look? Black interior, black exterior, black wheels. I kind of like the sport design or sport classic, whatever wheels they're called. I'll put in a picture of them. They're silver. I think it looks really good, but I don't know. We might just keep it as is, but comment down below. All right, one last court. Not sponsored by Mobile One, but if you're watching guys, hit us up. These one quart bottles are a little bit more convenient to uh, pour without a funnel. Yeah. Okay, that's seven quarts. We'll start there. It should take like 8.5, but you can always add, but you can't subtract. By the way, when we're done with it, as with all of our cars, if, if you want to buy it, we might just sell it for the right price. Everything is always for sale. We got too many cars anyway. 25 grand. Yeah, I think it's worth 25 grand. It's slightly less than that, but I'm pretty sure I'll throw it up on the screen. The 2008, which is the rarest of the Cayman years with a few nice options like uh, the Sport Chrono, of course, the six speed. Oh, and I guess HID headlights if that's optional. Okay, cover's going back on. That new air oil separator, hopefully it lasts. All right, I hope we won't need to come back in here. Yeah, it's slightly annoying and tricky to work on having to lean over the quarters to you know, do anything inside of here, but hey, that mid-engine design gives you that sweet handling and a rear trunk, which is really nice. So you have a front trunk, a rear trunk, a shelf here to put stuff on. This thing is so economical. All right, it's on level surface. Let's check the oil level if it registers. I don't know if this will work or if it needs to run. Oh crap, it says it's overfilled. You gotta be kidding me. Are you kidding me? All right, hopefully half quart goes into the oil uh, filter and then it gets back to where it should be. I'd say so. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Three, two, one. All right. Yep, little smoke. Still just a little burning off. Dang it, should have done this away from the hangar door. Before we continue, I have to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Movement. So I talk about enhancing cars all the time on this channel, but let's quickly talk about enhancing an outfit. Something as simple as a sleek watch or a new piece of jewelry can immediately take your outfit to the next level. As you can see here, I have quite a few Movement watches in my collection already, and I am very excited to unbox my latest edition. Somehow, I was lucky enough to get my hands on their new limited edition Raptor Automatic. It's very fitting for me since it's built with high performance automotive materials. A forged dial, titanium case, sapphire crystal, and a ceramic bezel. And they have watches to fit anyone's budget. I routinely get compliments whenever I wear these watches out. You've got the hookup with our friends over at Movement. Save big with 20% off at mvmt.com slash jrgarage or use the promo code jrgarage at checkout. Once again, that's mvmt.com slash jrgarage for 20% off their wide ranging inventory. So support those who support us by checking out movement today and back to the video all right we're about 10 minutes into the drive i'm just babying it to get all warmed up i think it's doing pretty well chris all right i'd say so last time we drove this thing i couldn't breathe we had the hatch left open to try to help air out some of the smoke this is this is much more pleasant definitely quieter than our blue boxster the 987s you guys remember we weren't sure if that thing had an exhaust well now I am sure because that was definitely not a factory rear muffler setup. After looking it up on Renless, the factory rear section has two, one on each side, secondary catalytic converters built into it. So the Blue Boxster, there were no secondary cats, so that's why it was obviously louder, had a really cool sound to it. <laughs> So with an exhaust, we would definitely unlock a lot of power and a lot of sound. So I kind of wish it had the blue box through exhaust because this is, I mean, it's good, but it's not great. It could be better. Give it some revs. Yeah, it does sound very stuff. It's just not the same as the blue one, that's for sure. So we need to do an exhaust, so please like the video. Okay, anyway, we're fully warmed up. Who says we go for a first full throttle acceleration? Here we go to red line. Holy crap, that's fast! Whoa! Whoa, okay. Dang. Wow. That is pretty quick. It Quicker works. than the Boxster? 
Why did oh, that yeah. feel quicker? Because it has a bigger engine. Guys, remember our boxer is 3.2 liter, this is 3.4. This makes an additional 15 horse, 15 torque. Ah. And it weighs the same, that's why it feels quicker. That is crazy how we can feel that in the butt dyno. Wow, this thing moves. Okay, it didn't blow up. That's great. One more time through that six speed. Yeah. Man, listen to that. Holy. Brakes work. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, a couple revs and a little takeoff. Much better. That is not your mama's Porsche Boxster. It's just such linear, smooth power. I think it has deserved its spot in the hangar. It's not sitting outside anymore. It's not even going in the work in progress warehouse. Dude, it's like done. It's going to the showroom. Did we just sort this car out in like three days for, let's see. Let's break, uh, let's break down the cost. Let's get back in and tell you exactly what we're in this car to sort it out. Home sweet home. All right, let's not hit the Lambo. There we go. Yeah, stay tuned for future content. Um, yeah, anyway, if you know, you know. Okay, I think it's time we answer the question that everyone's been asking in the past couple videos. What did we pay for the cheapest Cayman S here? The total cost to sort it and the total, total out the door price we are in this car as it sits right now. Which after that full send, I think is quite dialed. I think it's safe to say this thing is not gonna blow up anytime soon. But of course, we're gonna drive it 500,000, couple thousand miles over the next few months here to really put it through its paces fully, but it's looking good. So. Oh boy, this is a good one. We don't always disclose what we pay on all these cars because sometimes we make too much money and people seem to have a problem with that. The second we try to go make a profit on a car and we post it for sale on the forums or on Facebook, there's always gonna be people in the comments being like, go check out this guy's video on YouTube. He admits that he only paid 50% of what he has it currently listed for. He's trying to scam people by making money. This is not allowed. Don't buy this car. Yeah, we took the risk buying this thing from auction sight unseen. We took the risk of this thing having a blown engine and being worth nothing. We had the expertise to know how to research the forms, to know how to sort this car out on a budget, and we know how to get these cars looking great along with our friends who come by to do the polishing and the detailing. We know how to sort these cars out and it takes a lot of time, let alone the time it takes to make these videos. So we should be making a profit at the end of the day. Minor rant, it just is annoying. So anyway, we will disclose it this time around. And yes, we will be standing to make a lot of money as long as it doesn't blow up. So like I mentioned, we bought this car at auction with those unknowns of unknown mileage. The gauge cluster doesn't light up, unknown start status, complete shot in the dark, but we like those ones on Porsches. We've historically done quite well on them. But honestly, we're kind of asking for trouble. This is normally not a good idea. We've just been really lucky and I'm sure the luck won't continue forever. You know, it's inevitable, but knock on wood. It's not wood, but good enough. Hopefully the luck continues. Okay. Drum roll please, what did we buy this thing for at auction? Initial cost of purchase, final winning bid at auction, $9,500. $9,500 bucks for a Cayman S. Not bad, not bad. But in part one when we thought it had a bad engine, very bad, very bad. So with these out the door, $10,308. But of course it was in Southern California. We needed it shipped to Arizona. And as a non-running car, it usually costs a little bit more, but we got a great deal at $500. So that's the price all in to get it here to our garage. But it obviously needed a lot of work. So let's go through that. I mean, the cost to get to the battery, all that stuff. Luckily, the electronics weird issue was just that uh, relay, which was sitting on the floorboard. So we didn't even have to buy that. So our first cost was I mean, sure, we added like some fuel stabilizers and oil stabilizers, all that stuff. But right when we got power to the car, we initially started it up and that's when we saw the huge smoke screen. We immediately started doing research and turned out to be the AOS. So that's what we went for right away. And I have the screenshot off Amazon. I kept saying $55. It's not, it was actually $51.49. Okay, add that to the total. 
And then of course I bought the engine air filter. That was $37.15. It's the original, it's the OEM. I wanted to get something good that'll last. However, for the cabin air filter, it doesn't really matter. And there was one with great reviews for, get this, only $7.07. .07. It was for some reason on a 65% sale on Amazon. So bought that, and then we got the spark plugs, six of those, actually seven of those, because we had to buy that one just to thread into that one cylinder that it was missing on, and then we decided to yank them all out. Six new ones at, they were about $9 a piece. So what's that, 54 bucks for the spark plugs. Didn't replace the coil packs because they were working just fine with no check engine lights or misfires. Um, from there, we also cleaned the MAF sensor. Thank goodness we didn't have to buy a new one. That would be, I think, a few hundred dollars. But we just cleaned it with a can of, I don't know, five buck MAF cleaner. So add that to the total. And then that's where we were up to for part two. Running and driving, working, no more smoke, good to go. And that leads us to the beginning of part three where we did an oil change, like I said. Seven bucks a quart times we used seven quarts. Uh, so it was at 49 bucks, plus the filter was under 10 bucks, and the little crushed nut washer was 25 cents. Reused the old drain plug, and then we just added a little oil stabilizer, not much, a, a dollar's worth or something. And that is it to get it to the point of where it's at behind me. Am I missing anything? Oh, the detail job, of course. The guys over at Pure Auto Detailing charged me about $325 for a detail like they did on this car, smaller car. So that was a great deal. And then the ceramic coating bottle, Avalon King, again, use my promo code down below. We used about a fifth of the bottle. So what was that, 10 bucks worth of ceramic coating, we'll say. And then just a couple hours of elbow grease cleaning it all up. I think that's everything. Eventually, we're gonna need three new tires, or at least two new tires. The front ones are pretty rough, so we'll call up Yokohama for that. And then maybe a transmission mount. I was feeling on those really hard shifts, just a little bit of like a shimmy, and I'm thinking that's the trans mount, maybe an engine mount. So we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but for now, we're totally solid. Like this thing runs great. So the grand total, we are in this Cayman S behind me, including purchase price and all of the costs to sort it out is right here. Whatever it says, I think it's 11,000 and change. Nice. A little over $11,000 for a clean title, no accidents, running and driving, Porsche Cayman S with a manual, not a Tiptronic. That right there is a smoking deal, I think. Actually, no, not I think, I know, I know. I mean, now normally is the time where I ask you guys, what do you guys think? Did I get a good deal? Did I screw up? Did I pay too much? But really, that's a rhetorical question. I already know the answer. Unless this thing blows up tomorrow, knock on wood, I'm pretty sure we just hit a smoking home run. Again, this is not a video to encourage you guys to go out to these auctions and just go sight unseen buying mechanically damaged Porsches and thinking that you can just get away with like a $50 fix. No, that normally does not work. Again, I just need to reiterate that so I don't get emails saying, I, I bought a cheap Boxster online and it's a piece of crap and it's blown up. Okay. I'm not advising this. I'm just saying you guys get to live vicariously through our somewhat stupid decisions sometimes, yet sometimes they pay off and turn out to be really good decisions, if that makes sense. So what do you guys think we should do with the Cayman S? Comment down below on the exhaust, like I said. Comment down below on the badge deletion. I, I just noticed that the Cayman badge was removed. Does this look cool or should we put Cayman back on? And then comment down below on the wheels. What they are, should we keep them or should we swap them for an OEM set? Please comment down below along with your thoughts on how the Boxster turned out. Crazy that just in three parts of this series, we're able to get this car virtually done, I guess, and all sorted. Hopefully stay tuned for a straight piping video next time. Obviously we still gotta get plates and registration and all that stuff for this car. So until then, for the next couple weeks, it's gonna be a little quiet with it. Um, but when that exhaust comes in and we got the plates, we're gonna be sending it, driving this thing all the time and watching the oil burn to confirm that there's no other lurking engine issues. But honestly, after the compression check and after everything we did and how it's running, holy smokes, this thing hauls. So it's got all the power and uh, hopefully it's gonna stay that way. So thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate the support and all the love on the Porsche content. I know we went on a little hiatus there of the Porsche, cheap Porsche content, so we're back, baby. What well, the last five videos have all been Porsche related. How about the next five videos all Porsche? Remember, we're gonna rename this channel JR Porsche and just do Porsche builds. No, I'm just kidding. Well, unless. Say that it feels right.